Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for the brand new video and I'm sorry I'm starting the video off a bit mentally but I am exhausted with this transfer news and the fact that we've finally got over the line I feel like I've ran through a mentality marathon if you catch my drift all this will he, won't he, it was like a footballing equivalent of Ross and Rachel your boy's tired people, but today is the day we finally get our answer to the age-old question. Will Seventy sign for this football club? Well, yes. Yes, he is. He's here. He's gorgeous. And I welcome Seventes. Did I just say he was gorgeous? All joking and all that aside, ladies and gentlemen, I am absolutely delighted to finally be able to sit here with a smile on my face and welcome Seventes. Yes, it's been a bit of a frustration, a bit of an annoyance, but that's sometimes just the way football actually is. Sometimes when we make the rumour videos, they sign very quickly. Other times it takes a little bit of time and I'm just so thankful that I won't need to see in my comment section, will we be signing Seventes? What's the updates on Seventes? The only comments I'm going to be seeing for now on is talking about Man of the Match performances. Fair boy, Seventy. So I strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. We are here not only to react to the latest signing, but to bridge the gap from those who watched the rumour video 27 years ago when I actually made it and those who didn't because they didn't want to get lost in a Rangers rumour. Excited in case it fell through. Well, I'm going to bridge the gap between both sets of camp so everyone leaves today's video knowing just a little bit more about our newest and latest signing in the old midfield department. And I, if you do find yourselves enjoying the channel or enjoying the content, please because they're hitting that like button. That would be absolutely sensational. Or hitting the subscribe button if you want to help us on our way to 60 frick. Gay, that would be sensational. Or if you want to wait to see whether or not this video or channel is worth hitting the like button or subscription for, that is fair. Let's go ahead and earn it. And I, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sitting here dressed like a chef for one reason and one reason only because Michael Beale is cooking. And you know, people, just to pull it down and calm myself down a little bit, I have done a lot of these videos over the years, player profiles. I've looked at a lot of football players for you guys right here on the channel and I've seen some great ones, I've seen some real surprises, I've seen ones that hasn't looked great and have turned out excellent and I've seen excellent ones turn out duff. It's been a journey, every up has a down if you catch my drift but there is something so special about when I've been looking in to this lad because I've never seen a player so unanimously praised from help to help to manager to manager to player to player to fan to fan, no matter MLS, even rival fans. Now, again, there's not that much hatred in the old MLS. It is quite a celebrated league and everyone gets sort of behind each other. But again, the way this lad gets spoken about behaving, rival fans praising him and plodding him is something so damn special. And that obviously brings expectations and a lot of people starting to look and starting to say, oh my God, this could be this, this could be that. And I get all that and I'm not trying to fuel that fire because again, some people do take time to adjust to a Ranger shirt and some people just never adjust to it. But I'm very, very hopeful and I'm very, very encouraged by the everything I've looked at regarding Jose Cervantes because not only have I learned how to pronounce his name properly, that's how much yeah, a bad man he is on that football park, is that everything I've looked at suggests he is exactly what we have needed. And I mentioned this over a month ago and every that way, a wee bit of comparisons to uh, Saucy Glenn Kamara. And I know that's a bit of a sour word to a lot of people and everything. Like that. I've let my opinions known, be known, sorry, about Glenn Kamara. I think he was a fantastic player and servant at this football club that stayed a year, 16 months, probably too long in it. Peter do in that way. But there is some similarities. If you want a quick summarisation how type of player he is, there is a lot of similarities way a Glenn Kamara. Danny panic, Danny hit the pause button didn't shout at me yet. I'm talking about the skill, the ability to pick up a ball in a tight area, to beat Neil Lennon in a phone box. You know what I mean? He's just be able to turn, twist, make space when there is no space to be made. But where I think Cervantes is a step up and a natural step up in this Rangers team and why, again, I'm doing the jokes that Beal's cooking and taking us forward and bringing in the right players is I look at Cervantes and I look at Kamara and I just see an upgrade in every single department and I rate Glenn Kamara. This isn't coming for a guy who's bitter or anything or sour about the way it's ended. I really rated 
Mr. 50k, but you look at Seventies, he's got other skill, he's got the technical a technical ability, but he's got the other end of the park as well with the, the shooting, the, the anticipation, the instincts to get forward, the aggression, the belief to get forward and have shots from range. He will pull the trigger that may frustrate some of us how often he does it, but he likes to get forward, he likes to drift into the box. If there's space there, the big man will make that run, but what's so damn impressive about this lad is he can play all the midfield positions at every single level and still play to that standard because he can get forward the box to box but the box to box part also means coming back and defending I wish some of our other midfielders knew that side of the game but this lad brings that to the table as well as again he's no a monster he's no a giant in the middle of the park he's no built like me if you catch my drift that's harsh laughing but he puts his self about and he's no scared of the physical contact and the, the way he does slide about and put himself about in the football park is why I think he will be a success in the SPFL level because it's great having all the technical ability and this and this and this but if you've got the bit of grit that is required to play in the SPFL and be a dominant midfielder in the SPFL and in my opinion he's got that same work rate and enthusiasm for the game for the likes we've already seen with Kieran Dill but Cantwell, remember Cantwell came at the football club and I says he puts himself about get slides in and I was getting slaughtered in the comment section and I was getting poked funny eh, on Twitter and I was saying Cantwell doesn't do this, he's a wee prima donna blah blah blah, well that's the exact same about Seventes is, yes he's got all the lovely skills and you'll see it in the highlight packages you'll see it on Twitter but when you watch him play a game of football watch the hard yards, the dirty yards he's almost a footballer's footballer if you catch my drift. Ah, you remember about three minutes ago when I says I wasn't going to raise expectations about too much pressure on the lad eh? I've just went ahead and said he's the best thing since sliced bread I do apologise about that big man but that is the tale of the tape when you look at this lad he has got a wee bit of everything and it's no surprise that Michael Beale has been such a long admirer of the man keeping an eye on him I'm sure when last year's Brighton scenario sort of fell away because Remember, ladies and gentlemen, Brighton were this close to bringing in the big man, and but the chairman moved the goalpost, it fell away right at the last hurdle, and what might be their loss could be our gain, and we look at it a year on, we could be profiting from a team's greed and everything like keeping a player too long. Keeping a player too long and doing themselves out of money. Where have I heard that, Ian? before Rangers, oh aye, it's us normally, we might finally have the other side of that coin and we may obviously be benefiting from someone who should have went last summer for a hell of a lot of money, rumoured to be about £15 million to the Premier League, now we've barely got them for buttons people and aye, that could be a tremendous bit of business and we could be sitting here looking from a year or two saying, by God, it was worth taking the L's on this guy, this guy and this guy, because we go... Jose. But as it has been over a month, there has been some time passed and a lot of games played for Mr. Jose Cervantes. So we're going to naturally drift in that because a lot of people started panicking saying, maybe he doesn't want to come here, maybe he wants money. There's just that weird narrative. Something transfers take long. We didn't need to start creating stories and start creating WhatsApp BS. People was never wanting more money or wanting this. He was just a professional in LAFC, who have been quite unanimously difficult just as Brighton last summer, wanted to wait until this break in the ML before moving on one of their top talents and I think Rangers and them came to the right agreement and that was very interesting because to me it tells you everything about the character in that as well because you can have all the, the bells and the whistles and be impressive in this but if you've got nothing in here when you come to a club like this that's the pressure on this you can fold we've seen it so so many things but what I really like about this lad and keep an eye on him especially over the last month this has been maybe the worst kept secret in the world football people that we are signing Jose Cervantes the boy was sitting there liking everyone on Instagram like me whenever I see a Margot Robbie post I'm just like na 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 yes yes Nah, nah. Yes, I'm going to go see Barbie because of her, but I will leave that for another time. Movie review channel coming very soon. The guy has let it be known that he is coming to Rangers, but the reason I mention all of this is there's been such a long period of time and a hell of a lot of games in between that period. And what did he do at his club, LA FC? Did he start looking after himself? Did he start saying, oh, I'm hurt here, oh, I'm here? Did he start maybe letting himself die down and not really give his absolute all in a game of football, protecting himself so he can come ahead and join Rangers? No, ladies and gentlemen, he was the utmost, utmost professional and played his absolute best football he can, given absolutely everything over the last month, despite it being clear he is 
coming to Rangers. So that for me tells you a wee bit about his personality and what he's got inside as well. He didn't need down tools. He didn't start looking after himself. He played football the right way. And aye, that's the type of, um, the type of attitudes I want real professionals in this football club. Because to me, it felt like there was a couple guys that thought they run the coop over the last couple of years. And that word professionalism wasn't actually there. They've been moved on now and I think we're bringing in the right attitudes and the right personalities to make this team genuinely successful. But as it has been a little while since we discussed and looked at his old numbers, let's get to it then shall we because I think it's going to tell you how he's playing leading up to his move to Rangers. Fit and firing if you catch my drift. He's played a total of 26 games in all competitions with seven of them being for his international side by the way, grabbing one goal during that period as well. Just playing better and better and it's great to see his most recent international performance actually brought his first goal and a lot of man in the match shouts as well. So he's actually getting better and better as he's coming up the road. We love to see that, Mr. Jose. But looking at his entire season, both club and international, again, 26 times in which he had a total of two goals and five assists, which is obviously seven goal contributions in those 26, which again is still very impressive when you're looking at a centre midfielder, especially the way the season started off for him when we touched on this in the last time when it was evident he wouldn't sign a new deal and he wasn't wanting to commit to the football club. He did have that weird period where he started getting it in minutes, if you will, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes here, but he slowly but surely showed that he was an utmost professional and he would still be playing as hard as he could play and play his best of his ability. So he eventually worked his way back in to the starting 11 where he's no left it over the last couple of weeks. And what I think you'll find very interesting is when you take away the international football we've obviously mentioned a minute ago and start following the road and following the discussion we've mentioned regarding his time in the MLS this season, starting off with appearances here, there and everywhere and building himself up. He's played 19 times in total in the old American of football, which has one goal and four assists, sorry, making it five goal contributions, meaning he averages a goal or an assist every 3.8-ish games, I believe. It's in or around there, which is still so, so damn impressive. You'll take that for the, in the middle of the park, ladies and gentlemen. A goal or assist every three games, you're welcome right here at Rangers, especially, again, when you put into the context he wasn't getting his usual minutes at the start of the MLS calendar. But again, you might be thinking to yourself, aye, that's just one season, CJ, that's just this, that's just that. Maybe you're trying to look at it a bit pessimistically. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's pull it back and look at just his numbers entirely of the MLS. When you look at it, he's played 99 games in total. Honestly, that would ruin my OCD. I'd probably stay there for one more week people just to get that but I'll leave it for a second in which he had 14 goals and 17 assists making that 31 goal contributions in the 99 American football games people which means again throughout his entire time at the MLS no this season or this season or one season in wonder or one season fluke in fact his entire time in American football from the middle of the park, he has averaged a goal every 3.1, 3.2 games throughout his American career, which no matter what you say or try and say about the league or anything like that, it's a physically demanding league. He's won eh, the standouts. People can point at the James Sands of the world and say, aye, but he was supposed to be a good player. But he's just a guy in American football. Jose Cifentes has talked about one of the guys, and there's a distinct difference when you look at how he's reported to pretty much anyone else in the midfield department. And despite the man just being 24 years old, he is an established international for his country as well, being one of the hottest talents and one that's discussed and broken down in a tremendous amount of detail. There's a lot of love and a lot of respect behind our boy Cervantes. He's made 16 appearances for his country overall. We're grabbing his goal, which is obviously in his last game. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I've really got to say. Again, his entire football and TV, if you want the numbers, 146 games, 16 goals and 20 assists to his name at the highest level both at his time in the MLS and before that as well so for me everything I see about this lad both on the paper and the eye test when looking into him and watching these LA games especially at 2 o'clock 3 o'clock in the morning like, I've just been so impressed by the way he goes about his business he's a workhorse with real quality and an eye for getting forward and being involved he doesn't just admire the passes or be happy after he's moved it from here to here no he then chases it he wants to combine and I can't help but think of him Raskin and Cantwell playing together, all three of them seeing the game the same way, that could be one of the most dominating midfielders we've had in a very, very long time, but real quality and goals and assists 
in that midfield as well. So, aye, that's all I'm going to say about the lad. I'm delighted it's finally over the line. I'm delighted to see the man in the royal blue of Rangers. Can't wait to see him pull on the Rangers shirt. Hopefully, it's very soon. But that is it regarding Jose Cervantes. What about you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below. Are you happy? Are you mad? Are you sad? Or are you glad? Let me know. And as always, if there is any real news or anything that needs to be discussed, we'll discuss it right here on the channel. But until then, I've been Cedron Over92. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.